guys. Welcome back to our practice assignment series. Today we're going to be talking about PA number seven, the shaft guide. So let's take a look at this drawing. Let's break it down and let's see what we can do. So you're going to need lines, dimension. You're going to be trimming some stuff down, the tangent tool, center point rectangle or center point circle, sorry, and a sketch fillet. Um, you can be using a center point rectangle and I will be using one of those today. We will also be using some construction geometry, so you'll need to understand how to change lines from regular geometry to construction geometry. Um, you could use this using the mirror. There's a lot of different ways you could go about doing this. Um, I recommend the first time you draw it, you draw everything so you get good at it. Uh, and then the next time you draw it, draw only half of it. So if you take a look, you'll see that this is has a center line of symmetry going down the center. And if we draw one half, we could essentially mirror and fold it over to the other side. But some of these dimensions are kind of given to you in a way where you need some references from the other side. So some of them might work, some of them might not, um, but I'm gonna show you how to do that today. So the question we need to answer by the end of this is what is the total area of the shape? So it will be a closed polygon. Um, you'll see this area here. And when we're done, what is the total area of that shape? So without further ado, let's get back into on shape. All right, so from here, like always, we're gonna start, we'll start on our top plane. We'll press Shift and S to get that sketch started, N to normalize, and P to hide those planes. Um, what we're gonna start with is, I'm gonna start with a rectangle that is gonna be five wide by six, or 0.630. So if we look down here, we're gonna start and we're gonna make this kind of a rectangle to start five inches wide by 0.63 tall. Um, and I know we'll, we'll get to those rounded corners later. Um, and then we're gonna add some other geometry. And then from there, we're gonna draw this, this vertical four inch line uh, as a construction line. And we'll kind of go from there. So like I said, we'll start with a regular uh, center point rectangle. And we can use this, um, actually we'll go up a little bit above it. I wanna show you kind of a, a trick you can do. So we can use the origin as our bottom of this, this design by, we'll click R for rectangle. And I'm gonna, instead of starting directly on the origin as my center point, I just want my center point aligned with this origin and then come out and before I click I'm going to make sure my bottom line is oriented with that so we said we need this to be five wide by 0.63 tall and you'll see we end up with something like this right now what we're going to do is we're going to press L for line and before we actually draw that line we're going to press Q and we're going to turn that into a construction line so you'll see now that I'm drawing that line from that origin it's a dotted dashed line. If I press Q again, it'll turn it back into a regular line. So Q, we're going to click and make that four inches tall. I'm going to shut off my construction geometry by pressing the letter Q again. And then we're going to pick up with a circle, center point circle. So I'm going to draw a circle. And that circle if we look at our drawing is a radius of one, so R 1.00. Now, instantly everybody's gonna wanna go one, enter. The problem with that is, is if we look at this symbol right here, that means diameter. And I gave you a radius. And remember, a radius is half of the diameter. So what we need to do is, you can do the math in here. Let's say it was a harder number to do. I could say one times two, and it'll automatically make that two. And the way you know that that's a math problem is you'll see that little function symbol. Um, but I mean, one times two is easy enough to do in your head. Most of you guys are probably just gonna go two to make sure that that's what was given to you. Now, the way these drawings work, remember, I want you to kind of figure out what's going on and see that not everybody always gives you the best dimensions when you're making these things. So this is kind of an exercise in getting the part done without perfect measurements, if that makes sense. So if we look, zoom out again, we look back at our drawing, we just did this radius of one 
And now our outside circle is going to be a radius of one and a half. So we'll go back into on shape and we'll do another circle with a radius of 1.5. So 1.5 times two gives us a total of three. So you have a two inch circle and a three inch circle. After that, I'm going to go in and I'm going to round these corners really quick right here. These two edges, those need to be a radius of 0 0.380. So when I double click 0 0.380, you'll see it'll round that down there like so. And now we got to do some trimming. Um, so this is kind of where things can get a little tricky. So we've already gave it that five inch line, a couple ways you could do this. One, we need to add some points to the bottom to add some uh, geometry to. I could draw another line, but then things kind of get muddled and clunky. You could just straight up just delete this line too. So what I need to do is go from this point out 1.25. And again, I could do that on the other side. But like I was saying, we could do the mirror feature. So if we come back up here and I click mirror, I could mirror over that line. And then now I get what I need to. So I have two lines that are exactly the same, 1.25 mirrored over that uh, plane like so. Now what we need to do is draw a circle. Now this is where things get kind of funky. So this is where you're going to learn the tangent tool. We do know that our circle needs to align with this center point here. Okay. But our center is not actually going to be right here. I know a lot of you guys will probably want to go like this. And then you're going to realize, well, that's way too big. I don't want that. So where our circle is going to be is in line with this center line. But then I'm going to touch it to the side here. And by doing that, now you'll see I have a R1.813. So that's our radius. So I'm going to type in 1.813 times 2. And then press Enter. And you'll see now it's way bigger than we need. But I'm going to trim up what I don't need by getting rid of that stuff at the bottom right there. After you do that, you'll see that we have a radius now with a function. We'll zoom in on that. Uh, it's going to be a diameter of 3.626 because we told it 1.813 times 2. So sometimes I give you a radius measurement and you probably need the diameter. Sometimes I give you a diameter measurement some, and you actually need the radius. So be uh, paying attention to that in the packet. It's a attention to detail that I want you guys to get used to, to seeing. Okay. So after that, we pretty much have our shape drawn. Now we need to draw some lines up here and cut. Now, some things I want to show you. We're going to go from here, draw a line straight out. Okay. And then I'm going to click D for dimension. And I'm going to click my center point line and I'm going to click this. Now it wants to default to here, but I gave you the measurement of this side. And so some of you guys are like, well, I need it to be 60. That's not going to work. If you kind of come over to this center line, you'll see. I gave you a measurement of 60 here, not 60 total. So big, big difference when you're doing this. Sometimes if you're like, oh, 60, well, half of that would be 30. You're going to be way up high. And that's not going to be the right answer that you're going to need. So that's a 30. But you actually need 60 for a total of 120. So then if we do mirror again, I can mirror that line over. And then now come in with my trim tool and then trim up what I don't need and then trim off that excess. And you'll see now we have that upper part and that bottom part taken care of. We go back to our drawing. Now all I got to do is figure out here. And if we look, I have a circle it says two times, which means two of these have a radius of 1.25 radius of one, two, five is going to be a circle that is 1.25 times 2 would give us 2.5. And, and now I'll press T for tangent. And I'm going to click my circle I just created and this circle here. And it's going to touch itself at a point of tangency. And then we're going to do here 
touch the bottom to this line because that's the point of tangency it's going to need. Okay, at this point, I could draw another one over here, and I'm going to draw one um, to show you what happens if you draw it in the wrong location. So we'll go C, and we'll say 2.5, and you'll see I'm inside now. And if I say point of tangency here to here, and then I say here to here, it works out. Sometimes we'll back up. Let me make this a little bit bigger. I've run into the problem where it'll, um, like let's say I just do a big circle like this, and I say, and you do the order of operations wrong. So I say, hey, tangent this to this. Or let me see, let me move that a little over more. If I say tangent here to here, you'll see it'll go on that inside edge when we actually want it to be the outside edge. So be careful how big you actually draw your circle. For me, I like drawing it smaller. Um, and then tangent, and then tangent, and then, and then I come in and give it that dimension of 2.5. And you'll see sometimes it'll throw itself over and it'll put itself there. So you'd have to flip it actually to the other side. So very, very crucial that when you're doing some of these things, you pay attention to those order of operations. So 2.5, tangent those two, tangent those two. Now, we're gonna come in with the trim tool M. I'm gonna delete this outside, this outside, this little inner ring here, and this piece here. Um, like always, you would come down here. Our question is, what is the area of the shape? So I'm gonna change this really quick to a different number. That is not gonna mess this up. Let's change the number. Uh, let's make it a little wider. We'll make it eight. Doesn't like that either. I'm trying not to give you the answer. Let's, <laughs> let's do one point, and we'll change these. 1.5. There we go. And we'll make these 2.4. All right. So I would click here to get my area. And then if we come down here at the bottom, you'll see you're going to end up with a number that is not correct because the measurement's wrong. Um, change some things, right? Obviously. So see if you can get that measurement with the way I showed you step by step, and then you will be good to go. So that's going to do it for us today for the shaft guide. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. Again, you could use this as the mirror. Ah, whatever. I'll, uh, I'll do it as the mirror right now. I'll show you how to draw half of it. Okay, you're gonna go speed modeling. Let's do this. We're only running at about five minutes right now. So I'll show you a little bit more. First thing I would do is draw this center line. Uh, and I'm going to say it needs to be four. And then from here, I'm going to draw my rectangle, like I showed you guys before, I'm gonna make that five by 0.63. Okay. And then from here, I'm literally going to cut half of it off. Okay. Just because I already have my dimensions that I need. I'm going to go here. I already have that 0.38 measurement put in. From here, I'm going to draw that circle of two. I'm going to draw another circle. That's three. I'm going to draw a circle here. That's 2.5. Tangent to there and down to here. Trim this bad boy up. Trim that up to there. I'm going to take a line from here. Dimension that. I grab the right measurement. There we go. Dimension from this center line to here at 60 degrees. Trim all that. Trim and trim. Trim that up. 
trim that, draw a line from here over 1.25. And then I would mirror across this line, that whole thing. And the last step would be to draw a circle. Another way you could do this too, honestly, is use the three point arc tool. And you could say, hey, this point, this point, and then give it that radius of 1.813. And then you end up with the same drawing that we had before. So a couple of ways to go about doing that. Like I said, this is the way I would do it if I was going fast, um, trying to get things done. You know, the faster you can do these things and the more uh, repetition you do, you're going to build that muscle memory and you're going to get better at what you do. If you're doing this for a job, if you're doing this for a class and you're trying to get a job in that field, remember time is money and the faster you can get a drawing done, the more drawings you can get done, the more pay you can get. It's all going to work itself out. So now for real, that's going to do it for us today. Um, hope you guys are enjoying this down in the chat, in the comments, let me know if you have a different way of doing this, or if you found a faster way, that's even better than me. And if you're timing yourself, see what you can do. Let's see how fast you can do this thing. Um, but I'm hoping you guys are learning stuff and I will see you guys next week. Thanks. Take care. Bye.